Um, I call the colleagues for very short questions. In the second round, I start with colleague Andreasen, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I have three questions. One, in relation to EFSM. If we are saying that in the case of a default, it would be necessary to call contributions from the member states, isn't it the case that, in fact, it is the member states guaranteeing the 60 billion and not the EU budget? Uh, could you clarify the situation? And, you know, shouldn't we be looking to the member states a capacity to finance this default if it happens. The second question is why is the EFSF continuing to engage in lending programs after July 2012 when the ESM is already set up? Is there any specific reason for this? You said it has the same board of directors and the same staff. Does it have the same auditors also? The third question is, what does actually responsible for negotiating policy conditionality mean in the role of the Commission? Because when I asked the first question, uh, the answer was that it would be monitoring compliance. Now, negotiating policy conditionality is something very different. And the question that follows is, would the European semester have any influence in this negotiation of policy conditionality? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. No, I mean, many um, uh, very uh, important uh, and stimulating questions. Now, the, uh, uh, okay, my answer to uh, a number of, uh, uh, of them. First of all, on uh, whether the liabilities are for the member states and not for the EU budget. Uh, uh, I mean, ultimately, that is, uh, uh, that is the case. However, it is the EU budget that has a specific uh, um, PM uh, which is related uh, to, uh, to this. Uh, and uh, um, now the uh, refurbishing of the, um, of the EU budget in case of, uh, uh, of need uh, uh, and the fact that uh, uh, member states are obliged uh, uh, to do so. Now, the, um, it is very clear that, uh, as I indicated before, that the Commission would use its own treasury or, or uh, uh, if need be, uh, draw uh, exceptionally on its own resources account with the member states. And there is a provision, a specific provision of, of Article 12, Paragraph 3 of Regulation 1150 of uh, uh, 2000, that uh, uh, oblige member states to respond to the um, request uh, uh, of the Commission. And as I indicated, there is uh, a, a lead time of uh, 14 days for the ESM, uh, EFSM to, uh, um, let's say, for the, under the EFSM for the uh, member states and the program in case of repayment. Uh, and uh, if there is, uh, let's say, an early warning uh, that uh, this repayment is not forthcoming, we would activate uh, these uh, uh, provisions of, uh, under Article uh, uh, 12, and this is uh, an obligation of the Member State to uh, follow um, on this. Second point uh, on the uh, management cost uh, for the Commission, um, we are, as I, as, we, as I indicated, we have been uh, very, very careful in uh, uh, aligning the conditionality um, uh, under the uh, EFSM, under the uh, EFSF, ESM, so the conditionality is uh, uh, the same under all uh, uh, instruments, uh, and in fact is the, is the, it, it applies to a program and then the, the various instruments provide financing uh, of the uh, of the program. So the uh, cost related to uh, surveillance uh, is uh, fully integrated in the regular surveillance of the, uh, of the Commission. Um, I think under the uh, um, six-pack, uh, this uh, um, conditionality is sharpened, made more effective. The enforcement uh, is uh, um, stronger than we had it uh, before, and that is precisely in order to um, uh, make sure that the programs are implemented uh, uh, in uh, full and first and foremost uh, that uh, there is a prevention so that uh, uh, 
um, member states do not uh, uh, fall uh, uh, into, the, uh, uh, into a program uh, in, the first, uh, uh, in the first place. And as I indicated before, under the two PAC and the, uh, in the specific uh, uh, council regulation that is uh, under discussion uh, uh, now in co-decision with the European Parliament, uh, we strengthen even more the um, the, uh, con uh, the conditionality and uh, we follow it up uh, also in the post program period which is uh, um, one, uh, a period where uh, one may think that uh, if such, con such uh, uh, surveillance would not be uh, sharpened or would, would not continue that there would, could be some relaxation in the implementation of the uh, uh, conditionality. So we have uh, um, strengthened substantially the policy conditionality under the six-pack and the U-pack, and this is going to uh, back, I think, the, uh, clearly the um, uh, implementation of the, uh, the programmes. In its opinion on the ESM Treaty, the Dutch Council of State stresses that an important consequence of the chosen intergovernmental structure is that the ESM bodies cannot be held to account in the EU institutional framework. Furthermore, it points out that the ESM has judicial immunity, European Parliament plays no role, the European Court of Auditors has no audit right of its own, and the Court of Justice can only deal with disputes that are brought to it by an ESM member. Democratic control and public scrutiny only exist to the limited extent that the Ministers of Finance can be held to account by their national parliament for their individual share, a share in the functioning of the ESM, and not for the functioning of the ESM bodies or the organization as such. The Dutch Council of State considers the deficient democratic control problematic and even more so given the permanent character of the stability mechanism and its potential financial volume. In its opinion, the present intergovernmental form cannot be the final outcome of the continuing process of the structuring of economic governance, but just an intermediate outcome. Dutch government, however, disagrees. The accountability, the accountability that it gives to national parliament for the ESM exceeds that given for other international financial institutions like the IMF. According to Dutch government, this, in combination with the involvement of EU size and the European Court of Auditors in the ESM treaty, has laid an adequate basis for ensuring the public and democratic control of the ESM.